So tell me, what did you do with the stuff I talked about the first time? Like, what did you do? And she's like, well, I said, so you want new stuff? I didn't really do anything with the other stuff. And I think a lot of times, <laughs> like, I think a lot of times people, and we sometimes are worst enemies in education is that we always want to get the new, new thing, the new thing. And I'm like, we got to do some dig in to get really good at the old thing for it too. So like when you were telling that mm -hmm. story and, you know, I understand the practicality, I know, and I appreciate you sharing that. There's also sometimes you, people are always craving for new, new, new. I'm like, like, that's, how about you just kind of focus on, are you really doing the old part really well? Right. It's like, don't complain. We're being overwhelmed with initiatives. If you're constantly asking for new initiatives, because yeah. Like, I actually think there's, there's, you can be, you can do the same thing you did 10 years ago, but if you do it better, you're still on the cutting edge. That's, that's what I, I kind of look at it. It's not right. like we must move on to a new framework. We must move on to this thing. So just, I think that's something that I want to just share when I was listening to you, because I think sometimes we just want the new, I'm like, you're yeah. not good at the old, like get good at the old. Right. So, all right. Well, last, George, I've seen you, and I've seen you speak enough too, right. It's like, it's like what we want our audiences, hopefully, I mean, at least that's how I see it. And I've seen you speak enough. And I feel like I get that from you or whoever is we're listening to speak, people that we respect, people who are doing great yes. work in the field, right? Really, I truly believe helping people and doing it for the right reasons is I do believe that, you know, I try to be really honest and say, people, listen, I, I'm not here to tell you what to do. That's not my job, right? right? Like, I don't even know anything about your community, right? I really don't. Um, I'm honored to be here. I'm grateful. But what I'm really going to try to do is hopefully what I share today, one, I hope it validates what you're already doing. I mean, I hope that some of the things I talk about, you can feel good knowing that, yes, I feel like I'm doing some of the right things, especially for those who maybe sometimes don't get a lot of feedback, but it validates the work. I'm hoping that something I share today reminds you what you're currently doing, but what you like is the little bit, how it's a little different. And there's a little twist to it or something a little unique that you can now make a little bit of adjustment that maybe will take you to a little bit, a, a little bit higher level. I'm also hoping that I share something with you today that you go, oh my God, I hadn't even thought about that. I love that idea. Right. And hopefully you go think about that and reflect on that. But you know what I'm really hoping is that today you're just reminded of the things you already know, but for whatever reason, you're still not doing it or you used to do it and you stopped doing it. And I right. want to reignite that fire in you to go back and go be the person you said you always wanted to be. So Again, a lot of it, I think I, I find it somewhere in that arena, right? And that's kind of what you're talking about. Like, hey, are you doing the things that we talk about? You can tell me about the four core principles of culture, but I'm asking you, what's your framework? Yeah. And are you living your core every day in the classroom or in the building or at the district level? Because if you're not, then why do you want new stuff? Go go get the fundamentals down first, right? You know this as a coach. We can go put in all the offenses we want in the world, but if your fundamentals aren't solid, guess what? Won't matter, will it? You know, will not matter. So I think that's what I love about cold tries more. I think it is truly a foundational framework to set the foundation to say you can do so much more if you get your behavior right mm -hmm. and the way it's supposed to be. In other words, what's your leadership language? More importantly, what's your leadership behavior? What does it look like? Show me. So yeah, and I know that the the big thing is you know like you're here to I'm here to share ideas with you, but you got to figure out your solutions because it's your community and you know them best, right? right? So I love that. All right. Last question. So this is written in 2017. It is 2023, you know, and like, you know, I guess it kind of ties into just what we just talked about. Uh, you know, so you're looking at this right now. Why is this book still relevant in 2023, even though it was written six years ago? Yeah, I feel like I kind of, I apologize for that because I feel like I kind of answered that a little bit, but I'll just kind of repeat it one more time is the reason I think it's more relevant or it's just as relevant, I should say, yeah. because I still see culture's behavior. Right. And when you look at the behavior of people in organization, where is it coming from? And so if you think about it this way, right, like like one of the first things I always ask a principal, George, if I'm going to go into work with a principal, I just simply say, let me ask you a question. Just tell me what your vision is for your school. Right. Yeah. And part of it is, is because I want people to recognize that that has to be really clear. Right. And so what I see is they kind of hesitate or they kind of stumble over it a little bit or. I may ask them at the beginning of the day and I'll turn around the next day and I'll ask them again and they'll sound differently. And so one of the things I remind them is, hey, that has to be really clear because you need to keep reminding people what the vision is all the time, right? And so if you think about it this way, the vision is what do you hope to become someday, right? The other one is why do you even exist? What's your purpose? Why do you do, why do, you do what you do, right? And so to see that. But I think the, still as critical, as important as that is, is so talk to me a little bit about what behaviors are going to be required 
that you and your staff are doing in order to achieve that vision. And so those are the value statements, because to me, values are behaviors. And so how are we going to behave in this organization to achieve that vision? So I think the next step up, George, at least when I work and I notice is that almost, you know, obviously every school is going to have mission statements, vision statements and value statements. But yet you still watch behaviors in the organization that do not align with that. And so I say, let's take it one step further. And so here's where I think you can really move the needle and really take your culture to another level is I want you to think about it this way. Can we predict that right now that George, Jimmy, and everybody else on our staff, do you think there will be days when we don't live our core values that we violate those? Do you think there will be days when we get frustrated or we kind of maybe argue with a kid or maybe come across with a parent with a tone or a little bit more emotion than we should? Do you think that will happen eventually? And the answer is always yes, right? You know why? Because we're not perfect beings. So then the question is this. When that happens, my question is this. How are we going to respond when that happens? So if we can predict that's going to happen, why would we wait for that to happen? And then we walk over here and gossip about it or talk about it, but we really aren't doing about it. So mm -hmm. let's be a little bit more strategic and let's go ahead and work on our values, but let's take another step further. And now let's have the conversation right here before these, they're like the agreements, right? This is how we're, we're all agreeing. We're going to behave this way, but can mm -hmm. we also all agree that we're going to violate these values? Of course we are. Okay. So how do we create a culture permission then that allows all of us to be great that says, Hey, I want George to be great. I want Stephanie to be great, but no one's going to be able to do that on their own. So when George or Stephanie behave in a way that does not align with our values, then how am I going to respond to that? And so if we all agree that the way we would respond is say, hey, George, I get what you're saying, but that doesn't seem like it aligns with our values. Mm -hmm. And so you can go, you know what? I see it. You're right. Okay. And now you say thank you. Because in cultures of permission, it's because everybody wants everybody to be great at what they do.